Welcome to another camp update episode. This time we are working on expanding the camp. And as you can see from where dad is, 
we have made, as suggested by one of our subscribers or a few yeah. of our subscribers, a much bigger area of the tree root. So it's much more of a feature now. If you look where Dad's going, so we've expanded right out there and we've come right down here as well with these walls. And that's given us a lot more kind of comfortable living space. Uh, and it's also made a really nice feature of the trunk that's now protruding much more into the camp. And we had to put some sawdust down, didn't we, Dad, to make the... Yeah, we stop the clay, because there's so much clay. So if you just stick to your boots and you walk it everywhere, which is not good when you get home with the wife. <laughs> but um, look at that space. I mean, if I step back here... Must have doubled it. It was in there. Easily. The walls were here, Dad, coming across this front bit. Yeah. Down here to there. That's where the original wall was. So we've got a nice little area. We're not sure what to do with it yet. Suggestions welcome in the comments, folks. But... We're going to do something in that area for sure. And then we've also, over the other side, we uh, we were going to, sorry about the lighting, it's just the way the sun is. This wall here was actually following that part of the ash tree out here. Yeah. And we were going to go right round the back of the route and round here like we did that side, but then we just realised we're making so much work. Oh, there's plenty of space And here. we can no always question. do that in the yeah, future. Knows. So um, we just moved this wall, it was about here where Dad was, and we've moved it about yeah. three feet that way. So we've gained about three feet down there. So, um, space to do something there, should you want to do something? Yeah, I'm going to do a project there actually. Stay yeah. tuned for something that's going to be made here. In the kitchen, we've added some bars at the back to be able to hang pots and pans from and things. Yeah, and I've still got to add some siding to the log store and obviously fill the log store even more. But it's solid, isn't it, Dad, now? Yeah, it's all held together with brown paper and string. <laughs> no, we're super pleased. So, and I use that army shovel thing. Yeah. It's a, well, so it's a it's NATO, NATO one, I think it's a NATO. Yeah, it's 1965. 60s, yes, yeah, so yeah. I said, tell you what's handy, that spike on it. Wow, he goes through that dirt. The, pick, the pick bit. The pick yeah, axe, the pick yeah. piece is really good. Yeah, I'm going to go catfishing tomorrow, and uh, fingers crossed in the afternoon, I might have a lunker on there. So subscribe to Dad's channel, those who are interested. And I will be back tomorrow to carry on doing things to camp.
well, it's another day and I've come back to the camp and I had to do it. I had to expand the walls. Now, Dad, if you're watching, I know you'll be so frustrated because we just put that little wall across yesterday and we said we're going to leave the back area, but there was just something about my OCD where I was looking at the trunk and it wasn't as wide on the far side. So I went and moved the wall. Apologies, Dad, but it was quite hard work actually having to dig all that clay but we've expanded it the other side. And that means it just gives a, a, a much more kind of bigger living area, living space, but also it makes the tree that central feature. And it wasn't symmetrical and it was really frustrating me. So um, yeah, I had to expand it, but it's nice because the hard work's done now and I don't have to worry about doing it down the line because that's what happened when I had the bushcraft camp years ago, many years ago, you guys might remember it. Um, I've learned a lot from that. And one of the things was I kept expanding it. I'd started really small and then I just kept expanding it and expanding it and expanding it. And um, I've kind of learned from that. And now I've just realized, just expand it early to what I would like the size to be, the footprint to be of the camp. And then I can tinker around and add things to it then. So that was the, the kind of idea. It's a sweltering day. Um, we're coming up to late 20 degrees Celsius, zero wind, quite high humidity. Um, and it's just quite uncomfortable really, loads of bugs. Got Jacks with me, he's quite relaxed and chilled, but even he's not wanting to run around much. And I've just got some pork kebabs on the grill. Uh, they're like Greek, got a little Greek um, uh, seasoning on them. So I'm gonna have some of those, give Jacks some. And um, yeah, I'll show you what I've done, obviously with the log store as well. So yeah, thanks for joining me. And it's a total contrast to the last camp episode, which was just heavy thunderstorms and rain. Beautiful day. Just horrendous light to film in. This light, what you see here, it, I absolutely hate for filming. Love it for being in the outdoors, hate it for filming because the camera is kind of not like the human eye. It can't pick up the, see how it's overexposed back there? And then my face obviously is a bit more exposed. It's either or with cameras, unless you go really high end, really expensive, um, which I haven't, I haven't got really high end. This is a Canon 200D, so not even prosumer level camera. Yeah, let's get some food down the hatch. So here we go. Pork kebabs in the new woodland kitchen. Giving them about 20 minutes on the grill. Nice smoky flavor, nice marinade. And also got some chimichurri. Chimichurri, is it? Spread to go on top. Let's give it a go. Let's try it on that one. Ooh, yeah. Moment of truth. Oh, ho, ho. that was well worth faffing around with the fire for. Oh, I really like that. It's a time of year for kebabs, cooking meat on the fire, burgers, all that sort. The squirt, the chimichurri. Chimichurri. Is it chimichurri or chimichurri, guys? A or B? A is chimichurri, B is chimichurri. You are such a good boy, Jax. Yeah, you deserve that. Look, nice. Yum, 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 yum. Is it good? Ooh, spicy. Good boy. Here's where I'm at. Apologies for the lighting. This is what I mean about the exposure. Um, I did have an ND filter on the other lens, but I can't be bothered to switch it over. Either way, this is what we've done. We expanded these walls out here. We now have, I mean, look at that feature now of the, the ash tree, the, the big root system of that ash tree, which is what I've always wanted, was to keep that there. And it's now a really good central feature because we did have the walls coming here, but you couldn't see any of that root system over there. But now we've moved those walls along that side bit. A, you've got, a, we've got a lot more area there to do things. And B, we've just got a really nice backdrop of the tree root there. And then of course, this side here, Originally, it, it followed that root, that uh, trunk section out to this little tree here. And then Dad, Dad and I yesterday just moved it a little bit more that way. But today, I've done some digging around here and gained a lot more space over here. Now, I need to, or I'm planning to, cut this root, this trunk, sorry, down here. But I've got to be careful because from the way it's kind of leaning, I think a lot of support is on this bottom section of that split. So I've just got to be careful that maybe, you guys let me know, this is what I'm thinking, I might cut just down that first section of the split, down there, 
and then leave that bottom section as maybe a little table or, or a bench or something. I'm not too sure. I've just got to be really careful structurally. I don't want the root system to just fall out because that looks so cool with it like that. And obviously that entire root system is resting on all these logs where Ryan, my uh, friend who's a tree surgeon, uh, put all those, we put all those logs under for support because this whole trunk was coming all the way out here and right over there. For those that are wondering, this is Dad's little bit of DIY, uh, a bit of bicycle inner tube, nailed into two sticks and that way when two of you are whacking in a stake, you can wrap that around the stakes like so. And that way, like that, and that way you can keep your arms, it, it, one person could use it to be fair as well, you can just squeeze it and it help, help, holds the post straight while you hammer in with the back of your axle or mallet or anything like that. So that's just a little bit of dad's uh, nifty thrifty DIY. Added in some more vertical supports and we've now added in some more horizontal bars. These are A, structural to help secure it together, but B, I can hang things on all of these bars at different heights if I want to. Uh, pots, pans, spoons, all that sort of stuff, I can just hang there. Um, and also if I have something tall, bucket or something tall leaning, a backpack leaning against, you know, that leaning up, it stops anything falling out that way that's relatively tall. So that was the idea behind those bars. I'm going to make some potentially little hooks up here to hang things from. And um, I might put a little bit of fascia up here from a, a log, I'm not sure yet, just at the tip of the thing. And then down here, where I'm intending to keep all the logs for when we get the fires going, I've just nailed in some horizontal split log supports just to stop all of these falling out sideways. And you can see it, well the lighting's terrible here, but you can see it here, there as well. It just stops all the logs falling out sideways. I still need to add to the back. And around the back here, I essentially need to do the same thing and just get some horizontal split logs in there just to help stop everything falling out. And now I can stack them right up and let them season and use them as and when I want over on the fire pit over there. And that is it for this episode of the Bushcraft Camp 2.0. Like I said, there's, there's obviously quite a bit more I'd like to do here, but the main thing is to finish off the little kitchen and add the, more, the bars at the back, maybe a fascia, just tidy that up. Let me know what you'd sort of do with this area down here where that trunk sticks out because it's puzzling me a bit I need to sit and think about it and maybe draw up some ideas But um, obviously things to add see there's things to add like beds and more awesome Accessory type things for the camp. So there's plenty more to come. Um, I'm hoping the next one might be a fairly big project It's a little bit challenging um, So it might be a couple of weeks before that one comes up, but I've got a real good idea of what to do and where to do it I just need to plan it and, and build it properly hopefully um, it's exciting really pleased it's nice to be out in the sun outdoors and just making use of as much of the resources that I have here in a sustainable way a lot of people are saying oh you're cutting down loads of trees you're killing off your own woodland firstly it's actually part of woodland management um, but in the summer because some of you have said oh you're not really doing much of your woodland management kind of series the side of it that I started when I with the woodland and that's because a lot of woodland management is actually, certainly in, here in the UK, it's actually done in the winter, even around the world. It's done in the winter when the leaves aren't on the trees and the sap's not running up the trees. They can take a lot more. And that way, when you when they're cut, there's a lot more energy that's thrown into the tree, the new growth in the tree in the spring. So woodland management often happens the majority of the time in the winter. In the summer, it's a time to come and enjoy the woodland. You know, and what I'm doing here is I'm actually, where I can see the leaves on all the trees around me, I'm making use of the, tr the, the trees that have fallen over and have no leaves on them. So there's lots of dead hazel that got blasted down in the winter storms. And I can see it really clearly now because there's no leaves on it. In the winter, there's no leaves on any of the trees. So it could make it quite difficult between a green tree, a living tree and a dead tree. So I've utilized those resources as best I can. And obviously the ash tree with uh, all those resources that we got from that, which is still going strong because it was such a big tree. So it's exciting times and yeah, there will be more woodland management site uh, things to come. I've got some good little projects, uh, some traditional crafts to bring to you guys, uh, maybe in a, week, yeah, a couple of weeks actually, before I can get the things for that. But I'll show you some more traditional stuff 
for woodland management and just general cool things but i really appreciate you watching thank you very much um, if you're interested in following more of the adventure of the bushcraft series i'll put a link to the playlist in the description below my wooden life also follows on about what i do here in the woods um, and also i'm about to make another film for my second youtube channel which is called life of mike much more casual uh, kind of vlog style videos and this time it's going to be a bit of a bushcraft one so if you want to head on over there to life of mike again i'll put a link in the description below then um, feel free to subscribe and check out that channel too thank you very much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next episode <laughs>